Welcome back. Almost done. We're on problem number 19. Let me read it out loud. At a, bottling, at a bottling company, machine A fills a bottle with spring water, and machine B accepts the bottle only if the fluid ounces is between 11 7 eighths and 12 and 1 eighths. So let me, let, let me say O for ounces. So the ounces have to be between 11 and 7 eighths. This is, and that's O, not 0. Maybe I'll use X. X for ounces. X for ounces. That's an X, that weird looking symbol. And 12 and 1 eighths. That's what B accepts if, if, if the ounces are between that. If B accepts a bottle containing N fluid ounces, which of the following describes all possible values of n? So they're actually saying n for ounces. So <laughs> we could just say this. So n is between these two terms. And they give a bunch of choices that involve absolute values, right? And, and what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to draw this on a number line. And then I think you're gonna, the absolute values are going to make sense. Let me do a, another color just to change things a little bit. So if this is the number line, this is the number line. This is, oh, and this is 11 and 7 eighths. 11 and 7 eighths. 11 and 7 eighths. And this is 12 and 1 eighths, right? And n has to be between these two numbers, right? n could, can be anything between these two numbers. So what, when they're doing absolute value, I, you, I guess you can see that you know they're saying that uh, they have all these twelves and all of that, and I think you could immediately see the twelve is right in the middle of of these of these two numbers, right? Twelve is right there in the middle. Let me do a different color. This is twelve, right? It's right in smack dab in the middle. And as long as n is is a little bit less than twelve or a little bit more than twelve, we're okay. B, the machine B is going to accept it, right? So how much how much more how much more than twelve can can n be right? This is n. N can be anywhere in this range. It, obviously, if we if n is twelve, it's like perfect. It's just like right in the middle. It's definitely nowhere close to one of the the the, the bad ounces. It's kind of the perfect ounce. It's the perfect number of ounces in in the bottle of the spring water. Let's see. So how much more can can um, it can be one eighth more, right? This distance is one eighth. How much more can n be than twelve? It can be one eighth more. And how much less? Well, this distance is also one eighth, right? So we know that n minus twelve, right? The difference between n and twelve, the difference between n and twelve, and we don't know if n is greater than twelve or n is less than twelve. So we'll say just the difference, and we're going to take the absolute value. So because if n is greater, the absolute value doesn't matter, right? And if n is less, then we'll get a, you know, n minus 12 will be a negative number, but we just care about kind of the, the absolute difference. We don't care whether, you know, one is negative or one is positive. So we say that n minus 12 has to be less, the difference between n and 12, and that's just the absolute value of n minus 12, has to be less than or equal to this kind of tolerance, right? If you, you probably haven't done much manufacturing yet, but if you do, this, this is the kind of thing you'll, you'll deal with. So it has to be less than or equal to 1 eighth. And I want you to play around with this. I mean, we could, you could say, well, n can't be more than 1 eighth more than 12. So you could say that n minus 12 is, has to be less than or equal to 1 eighth. And then you could also say that on this side, n minus 12, right? If n is around here, n minus 12. So this is, this is if n is greater than 12. This is n is greater than 12. And then if n is less than 12, then n minus 12 has to be greater than or equal to minus 1 eighths, right? This might be more confusing to you, and, and I'm, I'm debating whether I should even write it. But these two things would also translate into this. But the, the big picture, absolute value just means the difference between two numbers. I don't care if one is bigger than the other. I'm just saying that the difference between these two numbers cannot be more than 1 eighth. So n minus 12, the absolute value is less than or equal to 1 eighth. And this choice, oh, well, actually, it, it's between these two values. It can't equal these values. So it can't equal these values. So it's not less than or equal. So it's not less than or equal. It's just less than. So n minus 12 is less than 1 eighth. 
That's choice C. And we are on the last problem. In the clear image, invert, invert colors. Number 20, almost there. The, in, the least integer of a set of consecutive integers is minus 25. So the least, the smallest, is equal to tw minus 25. The least is minus 25. If the sum of these integers is 26, so the sum is equal to 26, how many integers are in this set? This is interesting. So I have like, I have minus 25 plus something, plus something, plus something. And when I add up all of the integers, if I add up all of the integers, I get 26, right? So this is interesting. So it's the least integer of a, of a set of consecutive integers is minus 25. If the sum of these integers is 26, how many integers are in this set? Well, we start with minus 25, right? So the rest of the integers, the rest of the integers are going to have to equal if you know this is an equation, right? Minus 25 plus all of these random things. So let's add 25 to to both sides of these things. So the rest of the integers are going to have to equal. So you know dot. You know let's call it. You know this is i2 because this is i1, right? Integer 3, integer 4, plus integer n, right? Because we don't know how many there are. So that means that i2 plus i Three plus pop 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 pop. We don't know a bunch. I n is going to equal. I'm just adding 25 to both sides of this equation, so that is equal to 51, right? So how? See, the least integer of a set of consecutive integers is minus 25. Oh, I forgot. That's consecutive integers. So we actually know what these values are. Consecutive, right? So I two is going to be minus 24. I actually did this. I, you could almost ignore what I said just now. Let me actually clear this. I didn't read that consecutive. It's important to read your problems properly. So it's minus 25, minus 24, wait, plus minus 24, plus minus 23 is all. And then you know we don't know how, how high it goes, but that is equal to 26. Right. So what do we know? We know that. Like when we go from minus 25, minus 25 plus minus 24 plus you know minus 23, right? And we're going to go all the way to zero, and then we're going to keep adding that to you know one plus two plus three plus four, and we're going to add you know so you know. Well, let me let me write it this way: minus 25 plus minus 24 plus minus 23. Plus bam 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 bam, you know, plus plus minus one, plus zero, plus one, plus two, plus you know twenty four, plus twenty five. So I claim that the sum of all the integers from minus twenty five to twenty five is going to be zero. And how do I know that? Well, because minus one. Let me switch colors. Minus one is going to cancel out with one. You know, minus two is going to cancel out with two. Minus twenty-three is going to cancel out with positive twenty-three. Minus twenty-four is going to cancel out with twenty-four, and twenty-five is going to cancel out with twenty-six. Uh, twenty-five is going to cancel out. Negative twenty-five is going to cancel out with positive twenty-five. And so, the last term, twenty-six, has nothing to cancel out with it, and that's the sum, right? Because all of the other terms canceled out. So, how many terms are there? So, to go from minus twenty-five to minus one. That is 25 terms. Then to go from 1 to 25, that's 25 terms. And then we have 0 is one term, and then 26 is another term, right? So it's 25 plus 25 is 50 plus 1 plus 1, 52 terms. And that is choice E. And we are done that first section. I hope you had fun.